Welcome back to Tech Tips. I know it's been a while. I got a whole new setup behind me. Uh, the summer is getting close to the end. So yeah, I got a little bit more time now to start working on some of the videos. So today, what I want to show you is, um, is an, sort of an idea. It's not um, Tech Tip exactly like this is what you should do. Uh, but something that I'm exploring, something I'm looking into as a possible replacement for my text editor. All right, so we, uh, there's probably like almost like a religious fight between Ultra Edit and TextPad and everyone's saying their editor is best and uh, there's some people with Notepad++ on the site too. They're saying their own things. Um, but what I wanna do is see if there is an other, another text editor that can replace all those. And the best part, it is free. Not only it's free, it's open source and free. Uh, so, the editor is called Visual Studio Code. And I know as soon as you hear Visual Studio, it's like, whoa, that's for programmers, right? This is what programmers are going to use to write the code or whichever. Uh, but this one is different. This is not Visual Studio. This is Visual Studio Code. It is completely different from Visual Studio, even though names different just by a little bit. So, the way you can think about Visual Studio Code is... Not sure if it's the right way, but if you think of it this way, it'd probably be okay. It's like light version of Visual Studio for web programmers. Maybe. So if you think of it this way, it doesn't sound as intimidating, right? It's for web programmers. They just write HTML, which is the same thing as like what we do, right? We work with text files. Um, so why am I looking at it? So let us let me switch to uh, the screen so you can actually see what I'm talking about. So this is Visual Studio Code. And first thing you note is it's not intimidating at all. It doesn't have any of the programming stuff. Nothing jumps up and says like, hey, let's write some JavaScript or something like that. It's, um, it's just an editor and you have all the normal menus. You can do your uh, search and replace. You can do your copy and paste. Uh, it does have a uh, vertical selection mode. So if you like column mode and ultra edit, this has that too, which is, um, where is that selection? Um, column selection mode, right? So you can do similar things like you could do in ultra edit where if you work with OPT files, you can select, uh, you know, somebody loves their dot backslash in the front of the path. So you can just highlight it and get rid of that. Um, so it has all that stuff. But what I think, really separates this from ultra edit or text by other browsers is the way features in the normal editor are they're sort of being created by this company they put the features in that they think should be there and you kind of stuck with them this is how this editor works uh this is what it does and then over time they enhance it a little bit the way the way features work here is they work as extensions so if you click over here you can download different additions or extensions. So features uh, are kind of infinite, right? So other people can create these extensions and you get more features in the editor. So it's like unlimited expandability. So you can go to, and, and this is all free, by the way, the editor is free, the extensions are free. I don't know if there are any paid ones. I haven't seen any, um, but you can go and search for something that you need. So. Uh, one thing I did is um, I usually work with JSON files. So if I drag and drop one here, so it'll sort of highlight it for you, make it look pretty, which is what other editors do. But if let's say it comes in like as all in one line, there is an extension called fix JSON and that will um, take it from one line and it'll make it into something pretty like this. Let's say you're a programmer and you need to have your application accept uh, you need to build an object for this JSON file. So you can go to new and then you can say uh, paste JSON as code in C sharp, just put test. And this will build a class for you that you could paste into Visual Studio and automatically deserialize your object. I know it's over some people's heads who are not programmers. Um, also, you can do cool things like if you have an Excel file, for example. So this, here's a cool thing that I found. Uh, there is this extension called Excel Viewer, and what you can do with it is, 
you can uh, put an Excel here, right? So it looks like normal. Uh, but then you have this little button, which will show you a CSV file in a column mode, which is really cool. So what I did is I kind of hacked this. Uh, I went to the extension folder and I changed the Excel delimiters as well as the extension to be eligible for column mode. And I made it display that files, right? So now if you want to do quality control on a dat file, you don't have to load it to concordance or relativity or something like that. You can actually open it right here and just look at it in the column mode. Um, so I, I think this is really cool. Um, anyway, uh, it's still something that I'm kind of experimenting with and I'm seeing if it's going to work for me or not. Um, there are a couple of problems that I found with it. One, uh, the hourglass window on a hourglass cursor, right? That seemed to be a forgotten technology, just like seat belts and Star Trek, right? For whatever reason, when you do some kind of work with like a large JSON file or CSV, the cursor never changes to an hourglass and it looks like nothing's happening you kind of sit there's like what's going on is it doing something not doing something you're about to give up do something else suddenly oh, 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 it did it like what you know you can't just change your cursor to an hourglass i mean i don't know uh seems like the simplest things like that are overlooked i did see a couple of issues where uh columns weren't perfect on one that file i'm not really sure why that happened it only happened once to me I guess it's possible maybe there was a weird character or something like that uh and then the other thing updates it automatically updates everything up updates and sometimes updates to either visual studio code or to an extension they break some of the customization you make so when i uh, customized it to work with a dead file after some updates it stopped working so i had to go back and redo it so that that could be a little bit annoying um yeah so that's my um sort of my idea uh, for replacing text editor don't know if it's actually gonna happen i'm still trying it out i'm seeing if it's gonna work for me um i think i still prefer my ultra edit better but again i'm trying to use both at the same time and see what works well for me anyway if you're using this let me know if you like it don't like it i'd love to get any opinion that you have on this uh, maybe you got inspired to try it out let me know how it went for you uh, but again it's free you can install all kinds of extensions and uh, you can try it out and see if it works for you it could be a great addition to your toolkit all right that's it for this tech tip i will see you guys later